Hello YouTube, this is Dave and welcome to part 3 of our exploration of the TS-469 Pro from QNAP. Uh, we're running version 4.1.0 and in previous video I showed you the unboxing and then the second video we configured uh, our firmware and we created our own IP address and our own QNAP name and this all now works uh, through our local area network meaning our Wi-Fi in our home and now we're going to explore the QTS firmware through our browser like Chrome or Firefox or Safari and we'll be able to configure a whole bunch of things so that you can get it on your uh, your WAN which is your wide area network meaning out of your house so that you can uh, manage your QNAP from anywhere in the world. Uh, there's a whole bunch of other things we can configure and I'm going to run through the software now. So now we have our QFinder up here. Uh, we already configured our firmware so now we just simply you can log on from your local network. You can also type in your IP address at the top here. So when you're brought to this page this is our login page for our NAS. Uh, we're going to type in our default password and default username admin. You could change that of course. And we log in to QTS 4.1.0 and you get a welcome screen. In this welcome screen it will help you to configure some things right off the bat uh, to get it working personal to your Wi-Fi. So we can download uh, stations which are apps and these are the apps that are put on there by default because we chose multimedia installation instead of business installation. So basically you can use this as a DLNA server. It's telling you we have to set up our QNAP uh, cloud portal which allows us to connect to our NAS from anywhere in the world. And we're going to do that next. Then you have QSync where you can sync up pictures uh, from your iPhone or your Android device or from another PC uh, right to your account and it will land in your folders. Um, we'll go more of that in detail in a second. Then you have an App Center which is their App Store and then there's the uh, QNAP uh, apps that you get on your mobile devices as well as installing Mac and Windows uh, utilities. So we'll uh, come out of there and I'm going to show you uh, around the software. So here you have a main menu and these are the apps that you have installed already by default and then you have a control panel which is like settings and then storage manager, all your users. Now these two here, the MyQNAP Cloud, that's an account that you create and you have a username and password and it will sync uh, so that you can get on to your QNAP from the cloud. Then the QSync I told you about then you have App Center and you have Quick Start. That's that little guide that popped up. Here we have our QNAP name. We have the time displayed and configured with the internet so that it uh, goes. This is the uh, My QNAP Cloud. Uh, but here we have background task. We have external devices that are connected through the USBs. And we have notifications including errors and warnings. You have uh, a way to restart your NAS or shut it down. You have a universal search to search for certain things. A great help guide. Uh, you have your default language. And then you can also set up these icons so they have more of a detailed look by having detailed thumbnails. Now, we're going to go through some of this software. But the first thing I have to show you is File Server. And when you open up File Server, basically uh, you get this error here uh, that you have to install Java. Now, Chrome is not a 64-bit um, browser, so we're going to have problems with that right off the bat. Now, what Java exactly does when it comes to QTS, I have no idea. You could try running this on Safari or Firefox because they're 64-bit. Uh, they have a 64-bit available. The other uh, thing I want to show you is that if you're like me and you like to create your own folders and make your QNAP look the way you want it to look, uh, you're out of luck. Uh, these default folders, I mean, they're there for a reason, uh, sort of like UP, uh, USB. When you connect something to the front of your QNAP and you press that uh, import button, uh, basically everything is going to go to this USB folder. In folders, you have whatever files that you put in there, 
And then there's a system-wide recycle bin. So if you ever delete something inside one of these folders, you can easily recover it. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this download folder is for download station. So anything you download uh, from the outside to your NAS uh, using the download station software uh, here, uh, you it will show up in this folder. Then you have home folders, and I'm not really sure uh, what they are for. And... Uh, uh, are they useful to me? I don't know. You have multimedia, and this is where you're going to put all of your media, your music, your photos. Um, you can build subfolders inside here, of course. Uh, and these are all shared folders. Um, when you use the multimedia folder, basically by default, uh, most of these uh, stations look inside multimedia, like music and photo and HD station and all that. They look inside this multimedia folder. So basically what you're going to want to do is put all your multimedia in there, uh, obviously. Uh, public, uh, this is things that you share uh, to your friends from your devices. You have recordings in case you have some uh, USB TV tuner stick uh, that you stick into your QNAP where you can get live stations and do recordings, which is nice. And then you have web here in case you're doing uh, file hosting, uh, not file hosting, in case you're doing like a web page. Uh, using some of their uh, third-party or even first-party apps uh, where you can have, uh, you know, build your own web pages and you have all that information in there. So then you have QSync, and QSync is um, a way to, it's sort of like a Dropbox, uh, an unlimited uh, storage amount of Dropbox. So basically, I have eight terabytes to play with, and I can use that and access it from any device uh, over the Internet and I have eight terabytes of, uh, of of space. So like with Dropbox, you know, you can get uh, 15 gigs or something, then you gotta pay and then it costs you money every year. Uh, this is great uh, feature with QNAP. Uh, you also have file sharing and that's more of uh, like Windows and things like that. Now, now that we're signed into our QNAP, when we go into Finder on our local network, meaning in our house on the Wi-Fi, they show up. I have it set up so that it shows up for like Windows computers as well as Macs. But when you try, when you access it here, this is the QSync folder. And uh, if you try to access any of these folders right now, uh, I'll show you in a second when it loads. Um, you won't be able to get into it. You'll get an error message uh, saying that it's not operating because we haven't configured it yet. So basically, uh, things are going to show up in your Finder and your local network. And uh, we're also going to do it in our wide area network as well. So let's go over some of these apps here. We have Control Panel. And if you open up Control Panel, uh, you have General Settings. And then everything becomes List View. But you have General Settings. You can set the time, the password, uh, and all that fe you know, personalized feature. You have the Storage Manager. And the Storage Manager will pretty much tell you the health of your disks. And... Uh, storage pools you can set up with ISCSI, uh, iSCSI uh, storage. And then you have the volume on all that encryption information as well. Uh, if you go back and you go into network, you're going to see that you're connected to the network. You can change different features of how you are uh, connect to the Internet. And then we'll go more into that in a second. But then you have security. Uh, you have hardware and uh, let me show you in uh, full view. So then you have hardware, then you have power, uh, power management, uh, where you can uh, connect to a, you know, you can ping your your NAS and it'll automatically uh, start up for you um, when it's in sleep mode or something. So you can resume power, uh, you could shut things down. You can even have a power schedule where you change, um, you know, when your NAS goes to sleep and things like that. So uh, security, hardware, uh, firmware update, uh, when the new 4.1.0 comes out uh, soon, they remove the beta from their website. Uh, I'm running the beta here. This is the 4.1.0. And uh, you'll be able to get that soon. So then you have backup and restore. And when you want to, if your NAS is acting up, uh, just back up all your data and reinitialize your NAS. You could start over again. Now, one word of warning, and it happened to me, if you have any USB devices connected to the back or the front of your NAS unit while you do a full reinitialization of your NAS, you will lose everything on those USB devices. 
Uh, mark my words, do not keep your USB devices connected uh, after you import all your media through these, the USB 3.0, say for instance. Um, you have it all on, you know, you, you transferred it over, you pretty much do it like a copy and paste and disconnect it when you're not using it. Don't keep it connected to your NAS because you might forget and when you do a restore, uh, your drive is finished. Um, QNAP was nice enough to pay for the restoration fee uh, through Seagate. Uh, that's where I have the three terabyte hard drive sent to. And they're going to do a full restore because when you erase a format, a hard drive, you don't really get rid of the media or whatever you have on there. Uh, what it does is it pretty much goes down to a lower level and the title uh, so that your computers can recognize what the, the, uh, the file is gets erased. So basically, uh, as long as you don't rewrite over a drive, you should be able to ha uh, get it recovered, hopefully. Uh, fingers crossed, I'll know in a couple of weeks. So now you have external devices, obviously. Uh, Whatever is connected to your external devices, you'll show up here. And then we have our system status and system logs. You have users so that you could set up, uh, we're our admin, of course, and you could set up other users and create what they actually can get access to. You have user groups, uh, and you also have shared folders. Of course, that's what you found in the uh, file uh, station. And these are the folders here. Unfortunately, there's no way to delete them. You have to stay with them. Uh, you can add more, you can remove, but you can't remove the uh, basic uh, folders. So if you're, uh, you know, anal retentive and you like to have things look the way you want to look, then the QNAP is not for you. Maybe in future uh, revisions they'll have it, but this is all to safeguard, uh, you know, where the apps or the stations look. Uh, if you have a multimedia phone folder throughout the whole system, then any of these apps can find, uh, you know, media because by default you have a multimedia folder. So I guess it's a good idea, but, uh, you know, I like to make my own folders. There's other NAS devices that I used, and you were able to erase all the folders, make what you want. So say you want a video, music, and a photo folder. Uh, you can do that, but you have to put it inside the multimedia folder. Uh, with that said, you can do quotas and domain security. And then this is all network settings so that you can set up all your network settings. And below that, then you have applications. And not all these applications are actual downloaded applications, but they're different ways to configure different things.